In this video, I'm going to talk about orbital diagrams um, and how to write electron configuration notation at the same time, as well as go over uh, several terms that you're going to need to know on this topic. So starting with orbital diagrams, uh, let's start with a really simple one. Let's draw the orbital diagram for hydrogen. Now hydrogen has one electron, and if you look at the periodic table, you can see that it has a 1s orbital. So we are going to draw that orbital and place the lone electron in the orbital like that. To write the electron configuration notation, you're basically just going to rewrite this in a different form. It looks just like that. Uh, let's do a more complicated one, slightly more complicated. Let's do beryllium. So, as you can see, beryllium has four electrons, and if you look for the orbital, it's going to be 1s2, 2s2. So, this time let's write the electron configuration first, 1s2, 2s2. To draw the orbital diagram, you're going to draw both orbitals as lines, like we did before, and just fill in the electrons. So, watch carefully how I fill in the electrons. The first orbital is 1s, second is 2s, 1s2, 2s2. Now, with what I just did, I demonstrated the Aufbau principle. The Aufbau principle is filling from the lowest energy orbitals up. So notice, I didn't fill them in like this. Right, that would not be correct. That would be wrong. And even though you get the same result, that's just not how the way you have to do it. You have to fill them in from the lowest orbital first. Secondly, I also demonstrated the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that it is impossible for two electrons to have the same quantum number. If you look at this electron and this electron, right? While the other quantum numbers may match up, right? The whole set will not match up because each of these will have a different value associated with the m sub s value. The first electron pointing up is going to have a positive one-half value, and the second is going to have a negative one-half value. Since those are different, you're not going to have the same set of quantum numbers. That is the Pauli exclusion principle. Now, let's keep going with some more examples. Carbon has six electrons. If you look at the periodic table, we're going to go 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So now we have an additional orbital we need to worry about. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So let's draw all those out. 1s2, 2s2, and... 2p. If you remember from a previous video, the reason we have these three orbitals here is we can have those three different orientations, right? So for example, this could be 2px, this could be 2py, and this could be 2pz. Let me move these a little bit. So now we have to demonstrate the other rules as well that we talked about earlier, Aufbau and uh, Hund's rule. So you would go 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Notice I didn't do this, that would be incorrect. You want to fill all the orbitals first, one at a time, uh, before you uh, fill in the, the ones that are already filled in, right? You want to make sure they're, they're all filled in with at least one electron before you start doubling up on electrons. So that was Hund's rule, or Hund's rule. And let me actually write all those definitions out for you. So remember the Aufbau principle. 
you must fill from lowest energy orbital upward. The Pauli exclusion principle states that two electrons cannot have the same quantum numbers, more accurately the same set of quantum numbers. And lastly, Hund's rule that we just demonstrated states that orbitals of equal energy must be filled one at a time. So now that we've covered that, the last thing I want to cover is identifying valence electrons from your orbital diagrams. So in this case, in order to do that, remember valence electrons are the one in the outermost energy level, and they are the ones that interact with other atoms to engage in chemistry. So all you want to do for this is to look at your highest energy level, which would be the highest n number, the n principal quantum number, and all the electrons at that level will be your valence electrons. In this case, it's 1 because we only have a 1s. In this case, let me do it in a different color. In this case, it's 2s. And in this case, it's 2s and 2p. So here you have 1, here you have 2, and here you have 4. And for hydrogen, beryllium, and carbon, we can see they indeed have 1, 2, and 4. And I got this uh, periodic table from ptable.com. Uh, it's really useful. I love it. I've been using it anytime I have uh, any sort of or had any sort of homework assignment. Um, so I highly recommend it. There is definitely also one in your textbook, so you can check that out as well. Thank you.